Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys some of my top farming strategies for mercenaries. Uh, some people were watching the stream and they were just getting bored because I was just farming. I was farming like crazy. I have all but one mercenary at level 30. I finished level 7 quests on nearly all of them. I farmed like 3,000 shards over cap for some of the rare mercenaries. And I did this in like... Uh, 60 hours or so. So uh, for me, farming the PvE side is very similar to playing an action RPG like Diablo or Path of Exile. And with that said, I think I am very good at it. So today I'll give you guys my top farming strategies that I've learned playing mercenaries. Let's get into it. So first off, there is a difference between normal and heroic. You almost always want to be doing normal stages. One of the first things you want to do when you start playing the game is to try to get through the stages as far as you can because every single stage or roughly every single stage is going to have some kind of quest reward with it. So you want to just kind of play through the PvE. Now, once you get to a point where you want some s specific units, it's important to go through the stages and understand how this mechanic works. Every boss has a little chest here. Now, these chests are not the same. Each boss has its own individual chest. Some mercenaries show up on multiple chests, uh, but uh, Usually the higher rarity ones show up on one specific chest. And it's also important to know that the rare one, honestly, don't worry about it. Well, I'll give you guys my last tip at the end of the video on how you will max out every single rare merc you will ever need. So you're really only looking for the epic mercs. Baron Getting's the epic one, and Garrosh is the epic one. So if you if you want very specific mercs that you haven't pulled from packs, you need to go through these chests. There are some websites out there like the Herathrena app that facilitates the process of doing that. So you can target farm. Now target farming is going to be really slow, especially if you're dealing with stages after the first two areas. Baron's is quite easy because there's it's very short. And up until Felwood, the last one, I would say it's fine. A lot of people watch me play with Anduin throughout the campaign, and King Crush is a pretty solid starter. So this stage is probably the highest one. I would highly recommend farming, especially if you want an Anduin or Crush on your team. The reason is with this stage here, we'll just pick a random team, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The boss, he takes 10 extra damage from Holy, and then that is again multiplied if it's from a blue source. So even even like a few tanks and Zyrella can kill this guy. If you have Velen, amazing. Uther, amazing. But you can just even kill him with just random blue units. He's fairly easy. This stage is also fairly short. I think they get one or two stages longer. So this is like one stage, two stage three stage, four stage, five stage, six stages. So six stages, but usually what you want to do is you want to skip through them and you want to always go on a mystery. The mystery, it's very important we talk about this, can be four outcomes. One of the outcomes rushes you to the boss. It's a good idea to do this because... Um, yeah, rushing to the boss, that's generally why you're farming that zone. The other one can be the quest quest is very good. You should do the quests. The quests go to 18. The last three quests for every mercenary is one pack each. So each mercenary leveling and questing the full is three packs per mercenary. That's like 150 packs if you're an absolute mad person trying to play through that game mode that way. So the quests are worth it. You also get lots of shards of that mercenary and random other mercenaries throughout. So it's very valuable to do quest. Quest farming is a big part of the farming strategy. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that the experience that you get on the mercenaries, it doesn't matter if you actually use them or they're in your bench, and the mercenary experience is generally based off of the health of the opponents. So uh, this boss also has a lot of health. This is a very good stage for farming experience. So if you want Anduin and you're finished opening your packs, this is a nice stage to farm. I highly recommend it. Uh, I have even done that stage on Heroic. Now, you can do a stage on Heroic. Um, I would recommend only doing a stage on Heroic if you can clear it only like 10% slower than normal. The Heroic rewards, these here, so you will get the 
boss specific rewards you'll also get random rewards of the mercenaries in your own party and you can get rewards that are neither it's like the the x factor the mystery box okay um so those rewards do change from normal to heroic on normal i believe you can get a stack of five and i think the highest is a stack of 25 and on heroic i believe it's just plus five the stacks go from 10 to 30. It's a very small change in rewards and you have to keep in mind a lot of those rewards are concentrated in getting the quest through the mystery. So if you're clearing heroic like 20, 30, 40 or forbid uh, twice as slow, there's no way that's worth it. You have to think of it as time investment. Play this like you're playing Diablo or PoE. Maximum maximum value for your time so you're almost never doing heroics when you are farming the later stages now there is a, an exception to that but before that i want to kind of cover builds real quick so um fine let's see here we can choose the stage again so you can make decks here the free to play comp that i recommend but honestly you can use you can use Cariel instead of cornelius um, you don't have to go the nature route the idea is if you have a tank that can self-heal and constantly have taunt with a healer or an okay healer along with a mercenary that scales so millhouse can just non-stop put up arcane damage this is scaling, okay? And then you can scale that into massive hits. These types of comps can do the difficult stages. You want a comp like this one, doesn't have to be this one, but like this one, in order to clear the game once. The first time clear rewards are quite good. Now, once you have cleared the game once, you can try to target farm specific stages, maybe like the Anduin one, and based on the stage, the comp is going to vary so don't don't go too crazy give a few things a try that's just a basic recommendation now you also want to have a comp that looks like this you want to have um you can use like andu and you can use baron you can use like the high-end stuff but honestly it is not needed use any kind of aoe millhouse has a very fast aoe he's very good at it varden has an aoe it doesn't do much damage but it, you can you can even buff it there flurry 10 damage easy do i have the arcane explosion i believe i do yeah so uh, for a farm team i'm going to show you guys where i i farm the most efficiently throughout this entire game mode honestly you want to have one really strong aoe or like two free to play AoEs. doesn't really matter uh, you want to have a guy that you're leveling or two or you, you can even have like three guys that you're leveling but you want to have a green dps that is fairly decked out you can use this green dps for just farming quests like if you need to get like high level quests on them that will do the trick the stage that i highly recommend for farming quests and i'll explain why this is really important is on heroic it's level eight level eight We'll pick the farm team so I can show you guys how this works here. Level 8 is really short, but on Heroic, it always has a mystery. And mystery is basically how you're farming quests. You always just go through the, the quickest way through to skip as many fights as possible. And one thing that has sped up my run significantly is that if I don't get a quest or a uh, boss portal, I retire the run. And I'll explain in a second why that is so, so, so important to do, especially for a free-to-play player. So I'll just show you guys here. There's really nothing to it. Even though it's heroic, they don't really have enough HP. So these are not strong AoE mercs, but if you use two weak AoE mercs, you can, look at that, it's just, one shot before they can act and Varden's AoE actually slows which is very good because if you don't one shot the opponents you're going to act first on the next round don't worry about those rewards 
always go through the path of least fights, least resistance. Uh, you can get a quest. I'm actually capped out on quests, so this is going to give me just shards of, of that, that type, which is fine, whatever. But let's say you get a quest there. You can actually retire the run there if you don't have the maximum amount of quests. I think of quests like... If I have a full quest log, I can AOE farm the quests. I can do objectives multiple times at once. You can always check your quest by scrolling down and clicking on the campfire. It'll show you all the quests you currently have available. And if you're not maxed on quests at this stage, you can click the view party and retire. Now this action is so powerful that I think it will be nerfed, but as far as right now, this is how you want to do it. You want to power farm the quest because the quests give you shards for the mercenary. They also give you random shards, they give you a lot of value. And in the end on quest 16, 17, 18, you're getting one pack per quest per mercenary. That's a lot of value. So you want to maximize the quest. It's not really worth killing the boss nonstop because these tokens are, are kind of whatever. These are just three rare. You're going to get the rares from the retire button. If you retire a run that is somewhat progressed, and for this I only retire after the mystery, you will get three random rare mercs. I believe the lowest you can get is seven, so this is lucky seven. This is as low shards as you can possibly get. But I'm doing these runs every, like, 60 to 150 seconds. I am going crazy fast through these runs. So I am picking up these mercenary tokens of the rare variation at an incredible rate. And you might ask why this is important. That's important because some of the best merc mercenaries in the game are actually rare. I would argue disproportionately so. The best green mercenary is Blademaster Samuro. He is rare and you can basically farm Blademaster Samuro tokens through doing this method. It doesn't, he doesn't even need to be in your party. He doesn't have to be part of the stage. You can farm all the rare mercenaries through the retire feature when speed running quests on heroic level 8 in the Barons. So that is such a powerful farming technique. You have to keep that in mind. Yes, I did buy a few hundred packs. Absolutely. I am whale of the sea Kriparian. But uh, like 750 bonus shards, I have them fully maxed out. I have this max, this max, this max, and all the passive maxed. When you max out all the skills and all the passives of a mercenary, they will get a bonus one attack and five health. And this is a major factor because a lot of people rank mercenaries just on an objective measure. But even someone like me who's gotten so many hundreds of packs, I cannot max Diablo. So I'm not really, I can't max almost any legendary. I think I only have Anduin max because I did that stage and because it was really good. I think I only have Anduin max. Uh, out of the epics, I think I have maybe two right? But the rares, I have them all maxed. And I have them all maxed, not because I open packs, because of this powerful farming technique. My point is that when you look at a tier list, the tier list compares a maxed out Diablo to a maxed out Blade Master. But to get a maxed out Blade Master is a matter of hours. To get a maxed out Diablo is a matter of weeks or a uh, incredibly large balance on your credit card. Okay, so the rare mercs have this extra power edge because it's very easy to max them. And some of these are so strong. Like Brucon is the core part of the nature build. You can run Brucon by himself. He's like Milhouse, constantly scaling nature damage, and then you scale into a colossal chain lightning hit. Look at Brucon's stats 881. They're that high because. I have everything maxed out. I even have, I don't know if you can, can see that, hold on. Look at that, 2,400 extra tokens, okay? Trust me when I say this, I didn't get those from PAX, okay? Uh, yeah, PAX may have netted me six, seven, eight, nine, maybe a 1,000 of those tokens, but I'm way, way, way over cap because of the 
powerful retire uh, farming technique. So it's very important to know that that is how it's done. Um, as of right now, I don't know if I'm going to be playing that much mercenaries until they have an update, but I have nearly all the mercenaries maxed those powerful farming techniques, and now they are your farming techniques. So if you enjoy mercenaries, and trust me, I enjoy the farming more than I did the PvP, now you know. And knowledge is power. So enjoy.